Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you visiting. Uh, it really helps uh, YouTube find uh, my channel if you hit the like button before you leave, so I'd appreciate it if you do that. Thank you so much in advance. Um, check out some of my other content too. There's a great deal of stuff here. I've got over 160 videos, and there's plenty of content, whether you're a beginner, kind of intermediate, or a little bit more advanced. So uh, subscribe and find out all the cool stuff that's here. Um, today I'm going to make, um, I think I'm going to use a blue topaz in it, but I'm going to make a variation of a bypass ring where it kind of grasps either side of the stone like this and then goes back around. It's a relatively simple design, but I think it's very pretty and I think it makes for a classic look. And uh, I don't think you'll have a problem selling these ones if you make these. So um, Before we get started though, I wanted to thank my uh, patrons over on Patreon. Uh, we have a growing community over there. I appreciate their investment in me, and I also enjoy uh, providing them with exclusive content and uh, polls on what's coming up as far as the content I'm producing, Discord server access, lots of fun stuff like that. Um, I even have a, the lowest level tier if you want to avoid the advertising on YouTube. That's a way you can do that. Uh, you'll get ad-free content over there, so you might check it out. Um, also, thank you to my subscribers on YouTube here because I have a, a, a growing community here as well. Uh, we just passed 3,600, and that's amazing. Thank you so much for that. Uh, make sure to check the video description for links about all those various things. Uh, there's even a merch store there if you want to buy yourself a coffee mug with my face on it or something. <laughs> uh, either way, enjoy the video today, and let's get started. So, for today's project, uh, I'm going to use... Uh, round blue topaz. I think it's a seven millimeter, if I remember. And uh, it's Swiss blue, meaning it's kind of that lighter blue color. I'm going to use some uh, 3 16 inch fine silver bezel that's 26 gauge, which is a little bit thicker. Uh, I have a piece of 10 gauge square. So I measured it. This is where it, about a seven and a half comes to. But if you look at my little drawing here, we're going to have a ring that kind of goes around like this. And I'm basing this off the one my wife bought years ago. It's this one here, which is very pretty. I always liked the style of it. I'm going to try and make something similar to it. This one's gold. but um, And I'm going to have a little bit bigger stone. So um, you'll notice on this one that it's wider up here, and then it tapers into a thinner band down here. That's why I have the... the um, 10 gauge square to start with here, and then we'll have to narrow out the middle a little bit. And I have some ideas on that. Traditionally, I probably would have just filed it narrower, but I think I'm going to use a rolling mill to try and press the middle part uh, narrower so it gradually gets bigger. And we'll give that an experiment and see how that works. So, But I think our first step is going to be to make a bezel. Okay, when I make a bezel, I usually do a step bezel, and I create it using some jump rings. So that's what we're going to do first. It so it's got a little bit extra for filing purposes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this solder the side of this bezel the way I normally would. 
for just a regular cabochon. But instead of putting a bottom on it like you normally would, we're going to create a little step inside of it with some jump rings. First, let's solder this closed. Square us out on the top there, maybe. Just a little bit of time shaping this with the needle nose pliers at the tips. Pretty close on size. Okay, let me find some 18 gauge wire. Just a little bit. Okay, yeah. 18. Now, like I said, I'm going to make two little jump rings. So it's a little bit big and gradually snip it down until it fits in there perfectly. Just a little big. Need to make one more at least. Sometimes if you have a real deep stone, I'll use three layers so that the pavilion doesn't stick out the back end. I don't want it to be pokey. So I think I'm going to do a third one because I put this in here and it looks like uh, with two of them I still got a, lo a little bit of the pavilion's point exposed there, so and I can fit one more in there I think and it'll be just peachy. So let's do that. Mm -hmm.
make sure everything in there is going to be sitting flat when you're done so that your stone has a nice flat spot to sit on. Otherwise, you may have some problems setting your stone. When I was just putting it in there, it looked like it was wobbling. Or one side was a little bit higher than the other, which would cause your stone to, <clears throat> to not sit very well. So before you do solder it in, make sure everything is pushed down as far as, <clears throat> as, far as you can get it to go. Okay, that looks like it's sitting flatter to me. <clears throat> A little bit of solder here. Do we have any others over there? I think I need to cut a little bit more. File this down flat. Mm -hmm. So I usually just file it flush like that. Now we got a little platform for our stone to sit on. So now we need to make the shank of the ring. And like I said, I measured this out. With this kind of ring, you have to figure that if you go from you know, all the way around the finger and have the two ends of the, the shank meet in the middle, it would be just to here. But these are, not only are they curving out, which adds some length, they also wrap part of the way around, so we're going to have to overlap. So if I wanted a seven and a half, which is what I think I measured this for, um, I'm going to need to add a little bit extra on there. And that's what I did on this strip. I don't know if I said this earlier or not because I got interrupted while I was filming this, but um, this was seven and a half, and then I added some extra on here in order to have enough there to do that. Now, the other thing about this is with this style of ring, like I said, it's wider at the top on the on the band stock, and it's narrower in the middle here. So there's a couple of ways you can achieve that. Uh, one would be to just file it thinner in the middle, and that's quite a bit of work. And I've done that in the past. Um, probably for the final shaping on the top here, I'm going to use some just some filing to shape it. Uh, but for the rest of this, I'm going to use my rolling mill. I did a little bit of thinking about this, and I thought, you know, why why couldn't we just use the rolling mill in the middle part of it, you know, from both dimensions, and gradually get it narrower and narrower. And so I think we're going to do that. Now that's going to stretch this quite a bit beyond uh, the length we need, but that's okay. If we need to, we can always cut it uh, down to the size we want it to be. But uh, with, yeah, I suppose with some calculation, you could probably figure out exactly how long you need based on how uh, squished you're going to make the middle there, because it's going to stretch it out this way a little bit. But um, if you want to see, where did I put that one? Here's what I did earlier to prototype that idea. And so you can see where it gets narrower here, and then it's wide. Um, 
but this was originally about the same length here, so it stretches it out that much. I don't know though, see, and if you look at it this way, from there to there, and from there to there, is probably about the right length there. So maybe it'll work out just perfectly, I can just snip them off. I don't know, we'll have to see how it works out, but let's go over to the rolling mill and squish this in the middle. Uh, before we do that though, I think, let's see. Right about there. Well, and if I don't like the way this one comes out when I show you how I did it, I can always use the other one. I think that'll work either way. But I'll give it a try. So I'll meet you over at the rolling mill. Okay, apologies for my messy area here, but I'm gonna open. I opened the wheels up pretty far to where. I can get this through and then we'll just tighten it back down. In my experience, every time you go to change the depth on your rolling mill, it's always the opposite direction you have to turn it that you think it's going to be. <laughs> kind of like when uh, using a USB plug, you always automatically stick it in the wrong way so it doesn't go in. So I'm just rolling it in this dimension about up to where the purple mark is. We'll loosen it up. So do the same thing when I turned it to the other dimension. See, I just started to try to turn that the wrong way. getting pretty hard from getting uh, squished. <clears throat> if you're new to this, that's called work hardening. And if it gets to the point where it's so hard that it's starting to crack the metal, when you push it further, like squish it or something, you need to anneal it, which is to heat it up to the point where um, of a dull red color, and then let it cool off, and that puts that uh, mechanical work hardening out of it. Kind of straightening it out a little bit. A little wobbly while we're doing that. Yeah, I think we'll do it just a little bit more. <laughs> I got a little distorted, but you can see it gets quite a bit narrower there, so that'll take care of having to file away a whole bunch of that material, which takes a long time and is imprecise. So let's go back to the regular area. All right, so it's pretty stiff and, and springy now, so let's do what I was talking about over there and anneal it. Okay, 
just kind of that kind of a little bit of a glow to it. Not so much to where the uh, surface of the metal is getting shiny or anything. But we're going to kind of keep it at that temperature for a little bit and then let it cool off. Okay, so I want this to kind of smoothly merge into that wider area. So I think in order to do that, it might help me if I bent it a little bit like this so that I can file it into a nice smooth curve. Just a little, a little gentle filing like to kind of merge those two nicely. Oops. Kind of make that look nice and smooth. You also got it. Even when you anneal it, this is harder to bend over here than it is over here. So getting a nice smooth transition is sometimes challenging to get it to kind of bend at the same rate. If that makes any sense. do that on all of the sides I think. See, I squished this one a little bit further, so I'm probably going to have to cut out a piece at the end, which is fine. I'd probably do that anyway to make sure that the size was just right. But, so I think, so this one's got to be, going to come to about right there. So maybe the The starting the start of the taper where it starts to get thinner here should kind of be right about there. And I think if I wrap this around that way, that'll be about the right amount. So is that enough? I think that's enough. Maybe a little bit more than that. are going to come up and go like this, but then they also have to curve this way. So I think we should make it into a band where they go past each other first and then curve the other dimension. Even though we've changed the, the width of some of the square wire here, it's still going to act like square wire and try and twist on you. Or whatever it was, that twisty sort of thing. Okay. So, what I need to do is I need to get this on the ring mandrel and tap these downwards. And then, because we're bending it in all these weird directions back and forth, it might not be a bad idea to anneal it after a while so, until we get its final shape. I'll see. We'll have to see if we need to do that.
One of the things I can start to do. These gradually taper into a thinner, almost come to a point from the side like that, so I could start to shape them that way a little bit. And you can do that with a Dremel, or you can do it with your file. I'm going to use my file to start with. gradually tapers back into the end. Here we where they kind of taper down to the end there. They're not perfect, but they do for now. Alright, so now we need to get them to where they do that. Uh, and that's going to it's going to be hard to bend them like that, so I think we could try a couple of things. We could try using the bail making pliers. The problem is you don't want to squeeze too hard because the uh, piece on the outside here is going to leave a big dimple, so I don't know if that's the best bet. Um, could try just using leverage. Uh, although, again, we're going to have to be grabbing really hard, so uh, it may ding up the metal pretty badly. We could pound it over something that is uh, this size and shape that we want, so something about this size cylinder. I think maybe for this one we could try that, see if we get kind of a natural curve on the end there. I got this kind of cool little thing that somebody made. Might be able to just tap it down, get a little bit of a curve going. Let me put something under this to cushion it a bit. Just one more good use for your design idea book that you can get in my merch store. As hammer cushioning. What a multi-purpose notebook. Where I hit my finger usually. And it's doing it a little bit. doing it as good as I would hoped. So let's try this other side. I get it a little ways. Oh, I just have a thought. If I want those to curve outwards, I can just pound from the opposite side. That would be way easier. Let's try it with a gapping block. Well, look at that. That did work. Okay. Jed, you taught yourself something new today. You get so closed off in your little box of how you do things that sometimes you forget there's lots of alternate ways to achieve and sometimes better than the way you did before. And this is much better than trying to just manhandle it like I used to. that gives me a pretty nice curve which I can you know once I put it like this I can enhance that with uh, I'm taking a little bit out of the inside and that'll give us a real nice you know it's, it's thinner down here it's wider up here just a little bit 
it gradually tapers down to kind of a point and then we'll just carve out a little bit from the inside here so that that bezel will fit in there nicely and I'll probably use the Dremel to do that so I spent some time with the Dremel just kind of smoothing that out and smoothing the inside out and trying to make sure that everything was all kind of lined up the way I wanted um, the hardest part for me on this one is getting these guys you I want them both to kind of approach the bezel at kind of a slight angle upwards and be relatively symmetrical um, the other hard part is getting this end all the way to curve as far in as you want it to so we're gonna I may do a little bit more adjusting but then we're gonna solder this so. To use these things like this sometimes. I can position things on them where neither the bezel nor the band can drop out so it's kind of convenient that way and then I can just pick solder right there. So you want to make sure everything's positioned how you want it and then we'll just flux it and then uh, solder it together and then I'm going to spend a little time um, looks like I'm going to need to uh, size it down a little bit. Quite a bit of a mass in the, is in the band on this one. Of course you got the third hand soaking up a lot of heat. So it may take a little longer than usual to solder this. But you focus a lot of the heat on the band because there's a little bit more mass there than elsewhere. Square, uh, square wire lined back up. Okay, I'm going to go off and I'm going to use the Dremel a little bit more to smooth these more down in. And then uh, we'll come back and cut it for size. I think we'll be pretty close to letting it pickle and then we'll set stone. Shooting for a seven and a half and this is going to be significantly bigger I think. So yeah. So I think let's uh, pat it down on the bottom here. Let's cut it. pickle and then uh, I will do some cleanup and polishing and then I'll bring it back and we'll set the stone. So I got everything pretty much polished up. I wanted to show you compared to the original one that I was kind of copying. It's got slightly different proportions but pretty close. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this stone. 
not going to match exactly because it's that one's got a much smaller stone on it. But. Okay, I already filed this down to the you know what seemed to me to be the appropriate height, which if you're new to this with faceted stones is just a little bit above the girdle is left over so that you can get a good grip on it without you know, burying the stone too much. Okay, so I usually with the flat side of the meal nose probably just push them in a little bit. And then straight across from where I first pushed in, push it in a little bit. Then 90 degrees from there, push it in a little bit. You're trying to get it to where it doesn't move anymore by going opposite of each other. Push too hard on one side, sometimes it, it'll tip that up. And then you'll have to straighten your stone out again and sometimes reshape your bezel a little bit in order to do that. Since this is kind of, you know, just got a, a very simple design with this central focus. I want the central design to be very neat and symmetrical so I'm trying to very carefully you know, work this bezel over the top of that girdle without moving anything weird. Okay, well it seems like it's not moving anymore and it's pushed up against the stone pretty well. I'm going to use the rounded outer edge of the pliers here. And I'm going to go at it from the top now Just going to rub that top edge where it comes and meets the stone. So, with the exception of just a little bit of neatening up with the, the Dremel on the very top edge here, make sure I don't have any scratches or anything. Then I think I'll take some pictures and put them at the end of the video because I think we're pretty much done. So. It came out a little bit bigger than a seven, so next time I'll I'll know that and I'll make compensations for it. All right. Well, thanks. That was the modified bypass ring. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a, a relatively simple one to make, but I think it has a classic design. Uh, you know, check out a few of my other videos and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I put out three videos per week: one on Tuesdays generally, one on uh, Thursdays, and one on Saturday. Uh, thanks again for watching. Happy social smithing. Take care.